حبيب الله رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Praise be to Allah alone. We all praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one, and whomsoever Allah leaves us say, none can show Him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to the 78th episode in the series of Gardens of the Pious. Today, inshallah, we'll continue explaining the 13th chapter of this collection, and that is the 10th episode in this chapter. Chapter, Bayan Kathrati Turuq al Khair, showing the numerous ways of doing good. And inshallah, we'll begin today with the hadith, which is 131st. The hadith is also the 15th hadith in this chapter. An Abi Hurayrat radiyallahu anhu qal qal rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala adullukum ala ma yamhu allahu bihi al-khataya wa yarfa'u bihi al-darajat qalu bala ya rasulallah qal isbaag al-wudu'i ala al-makarih وكثرة الخطى إلى المساجد وانتظار الصلاة بعد الصلاة فذلك مرباط رواه مسلم أبو هريرة may Allah be pleased with him narrated that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said should I not tell you of something by which Allah will erase sins and elevate your ranks they said Yes, O Messenger of Allah. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, performing wudu properly, even in difficulty. And frequently going to the masjid and waiting eagerly for the next prayer after the prison one is over. Indeed, that is a ribat. The word ribat means staying on the frontier of a Muslim country for security and defense purposes. So a ribat is a form of jihad. Somebody is camping on the borders, uh, waiting for the right time. If the enemies happen to attack, he's there to defend the country, to protect the Muslims. So the ummah is asleep and he's awake all night taking turns, taking shifts in order to protect the Muslim Ummah, the Muslim city or the Muslim state. So this is indeed a form of jihad. Al-Ribat is al-Jihad. In Surah Al-Imran, Allah the Almighty said, Ya ayyuhan ladhina amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqullaha la'allakum tuflihun. That is the last ayah of Surah Al-Imran. So Allah the Almighty commanded patience and furthermore patience and a ribat, a ribat to continuously do the good deeds, to continuously repent from committing sins, to, continue, to continuously remain steadfast on the straight path. It is similar to somebody who is camping on the borders in order to protect the ummah. So this is indeed, as I said, a form of jihad. When the Prophet ﷺ said, Isbaagh al-wudu'i, Isbaagh is to perfect. When somebody is wearing a long outfit, we say, Sabigh. It is covering the entire body. When somebody is wearing an armor, a soldier on the battlefield is wearing a bulletproof vest. It's not just a vest, rather the whole suit is bulletproof. Sabigh, it covers the whole body. So isba'u al-wudu'i is to cover all the body parts which have been ordered to be washed. In the ayah, Ya ayuha al-ladina amanu idha qumtum ila salati faghsilu wujuhakum. So we know the limitations of the face. 
you wash the whole face. فَغْسِلُوا وَجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ And wash the arms, wash the hands up to the elbows. The Prophet ﷺ said, عَلَى الْمَكَارِحِ So washing those body parts properly, even during al-makarih, plural of makruh, which is difficulty, hardship, or something that the other person dislikes. The soldiers in the army, the marines, the military personnel, they don't have the luxury of having hot water or warm water. And whenever it is midwinter and it is extremely cold, all the water they have in the water tanks, which made of iron or steel, so it is like freezing water. They have to perform wudu. The water is there. So while they're wearing their military suits and their overalls, it's hard for them to unbutton them, to unzip their suits, and in order to perfect the wudu. But they do it. Those who would do this and do isbagh wudu and perform wudu properly, they will fold their sleeves. They will not be afraid that they're going to wrinkle their suits if he's a businessman or too many bonds if he's in the military. No, they would unfold their sleeves. They would fold their sleeves and wash their hands properly up to the elbows or even furthermore, as we explained earlier, that is the meaning of isbagh al -udu. Similarly, the feet, it's kind of cold. Yes, how long you been wearing your socks, leather socks, the khufayn, or the boots? Oh, it's been more than one day. The time has expired. You can't wipe over your socks or shoes or boots anymore. You have to take them off. That is makarih. It is dislike because it is extremely cold. I'm talking about something that we experienced and we have seen. So it is the hardest moment when you get up for Fajr prayer and it's early morning. It is the coldest time of the day, extremely cold. There is no hot water, there is no warm water and you have to perform wudu in order to pray. So Nabi Wasallam addressed three virtuous acts, three deeds. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before addressing them, shall I not guide you to something that if you do on a regular basis, despite difficulties and hardship, that Allah the Almighty will erase sins thereof and will raise your status and degrees into a higher level. They said, certainly, O Prophet of Allah, if it is something like that, then you should not expect it to be easy. Rather, it would require struggle. And by the way, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam addressed the Ummah with the different types of jihad, he said the hardest, <coughs> excuse me, is jihad al nafs is the struggle against the inner desire. Struggle with oneself in order to fulfill what Allah has ordered. A struggle with oneself to destine himself or herself from what Allah has prohibited and furthermore from the doubtful matters. So this is called jihad and it is the top most part of, the top <coughs> most part of jihad. So jihad, ribat, is also applicable in the fulfillment of the ibadat during hardship and hard times as we explained earlier. So the three acts as the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam prescribed in this hadith which Allah would use them to erase sins and raise those who would do them into higher ranks. Number one is بَغُلْ وُضُوءِ عَلَى الْمَكَارِهِ Fulfilling the wudu properly, even during hard times, during hardship, when the water is extremely cold, whenever you're attending a business meeting and um, you're wearing your nice suit, it's okay, take it off, fold your sleeves, perform your wudu properly. The second is كَثْرَةُ الْخُطَى إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدِ Kathra indicates frequently happening, much, from Kathir. So كَثْرَةُ الْخُطَى إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدِ الْخُطَى is plural of خط, the footstep. So كَثْرَةُ الْخُطَى إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدِ frequently taking footsteps towards al-masajid. 
which indicates the superiority of attending the prayer in congregation. And if you do that on a regular basis, five times a day, that means this is kathir, frequently. Okay? So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered men and those who can afford to attend the prayer in congregation, in the masjid, they should do it because of the extra reward if the person performs proper wudu and goes to the masjid. The prayer which he will offer in congregation would be 27 times greater as far as reward than if he were to offer the same prayer at home or in his shop, not in the masjid. But this is not something that everybody can afford or like to do on a regular basis. That is why it is called ribat, continuous jihad, continuous struggling against the desire of staying home, of not going to the masjid, of resting, of taking a break. So that's called ribat. In another narration collected by Malik, the Prophet وسلم, repeated the last statement, which is فَذَلِكُمْ الرِّبَاطِ He said, that is a ribat, that is the, the topmost part or action of jihad. That is the type of jihad which is admired most and recommended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, he repeated it twice, emphasized the importance of the fulfillment of these three acts. إسباغ الوضوء على المكاره كثرة الخطى إلى المساجد and the third is انتظار الصلاة بعد الصلاة فذلكم الرباط فذلكم الرباط that is the best form of jihad that is the best form of jihad that's why he repeated it twice what is the third one the third one as the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said وانتظار الصلاة بعد الصلاة waiting anxiously for the next prayer after having fulfilling the present prayer. So, the person who just offered a Zuhr prayer, for instance, he is not looking for an excuse to skip Asr in the masjid. Rather, from inside, he's very eager. He's anxiously waiting for the time of the next prayer which indicates how much love this person, he or she has to attend the prayer. For him, because it is, uh, according to the vast majority of the Jews, it is a must for men to attend the prayer in congregation in the masjid, as long as it is affordable, and the masjid is in a distance where they can reach easily. So he does not perceive the prayer in the masjid and in congregation, as a burden. Rather, he likes it. He's anxiously waiting for the next prayer. And in the sound hadith which is collected by Imam al-Bukhari a Muslim, which we have discussed before, سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّ Among the seven categories whom will be eligible to be sheltered in the shade of the throne of Allah the Almighty on the day of resurrection, when there will not be any shade but his, one, which is رجل قلبه معلق بالمساجد. A man whose heart is so attached to the masjid, in love with the masjid. What is the meaning of in love with the masjid? We know of many people who build luxurious masjid, but they don't pray in the masjid. Money laundering, money cleansing, or he builds a masjid for the soul of his late mother or his late father. I have entered some of those masjid. Masjid is very nice, but the man is, is a thief, you know. So he's building this masjid from the haram money, hoping that the reward will benefit him. And an indication that he is deprived from the reward, that he himself does not get to pray in the masjid. Neither this masjid or any other masjid. رجل قلبه معلق بالمساجد in a masjid whenever it is a prayer time he swings by he enters takes his shoes off and sits listen to the adhan if he comes earlier offers the sunnah then offer the fard and with comfort and tranquility he makes khitam al-salah then whenever he has to leave he leaves 
The word hanging is light a light pulp, a chandelier hanging from the roof of the room or the building. So every time this person leaves a masjid to do his business, take care of his daily affairs, he feels as if his heart is still hanging from the roof in the masjid. Is in the masjid, he left his heart there. He desires to go back. He is anxiously waiting for the time of the next prayer so that he can rush to attend the masjid. Not just he goes back and forth. There is a big difference between one who loves to go there and the term that the Prophet ﷺ used is very eloquent. قلبه معلق بالمساجد. And in this hadith which is collected by Imam Muslim hadith Abi Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, انتظار الصلاة بعد الصلاة. بعد الصلاة. انتظار. Anxiously waiting. So he plans things around the prayer time to make sure that he would not miss attending the prayer in the masjid. Now let's talk business. Would that contradict by any mean or affect by any chance the person's business? If he's a businessman, if he's a doctor and he has a clinic, if he's a lawyer, if he's a blacksmith, no. Wallahi, not. Rather, it would have a positive effect. It would bless his time, his effort and his wealth. And Allah blessed me with the chance to travel along and visit some of the very rich people who are multi-millionaires and they have big businesses. Some of these guys, I figured the reason because they're very humble people. I mean, I wouldn't say they are the smartest people on earth. That's why they were able to make that much money. No, they are very ordinary people. But I figured that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with that much wealth because whenever it is the prayer time, he is driving the latest Mercedes and he changes between the year models cars, Mercedes, the MWs, or whatever, different cars. And is he driving me from one office to another, or from one place to another? Whenever it is the prayer time, way before the Adhan, he says, Sheikh, I believe there will be a masjid like 15 minutes from here. They swing by. It's a very nice masjid. I want you to see it. This is an ordinary person. He's not a faqih. He's not a scholar. He's not a da'iya. I'm just talking about one example, and there are many of them. So he makes sure that he will be there before the adhan, or he would not miss takbiratul ihram under any circumstances. I'm sharing this with you because some people think, well, if you're going to do what you're saying, you won't have time to do business. You won't have time to prosper. No, no, no. Not at all. That is not true. Rather, the opposite is absolutely true. The students who are studying even for their finals, tomorrow is the final. Tomorrow I have a major exam. That's okay. Take from this very precious time of yours, which you dedicated entirely to study, a few minutes to attend the prayer in jama'ah, and you will see wonders. You will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your mind and strengthen your memory and will enable you to understand the question and what you're studying and you will do better than those who have been doing i'tikaf on their book like a bookworm and not doing their ibadah okay Allah will let you rely on your effort but the person who fulfills Allah's rights properly and fully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless him in his health in his time in his wealth in his family in his children, in all his life affairs, and furthermore, فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ will bless him towards the credit, towards the hereafter. Now, في المسند, Imam Ahmad, may Allah have mercy on him, collected a hadith that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, and the hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira, منتظر الصلاة بعد الصلاة كفارس اشتد به فرصه في سبيل الله. Wow! The person who will be anxiously waiting for the next prayer after offering the prison prayer will be like a Pharisee, a horseman on the battlefield. He is in the middle of the battlefield. 
and he's fighting bravely and he's showing a great courage. The person who will be waiting for the next prayer is like this mujahid on the battlefield. Tusalli alayhi malaikatullah. The Prophet said, continuously the angels of Allah will keep praying for him. Ma lam yuhdith aw yaqum wa huwa fi ribat al akbar. As long as he's sitting after the prayer in the same place, Tusalli alayhi malaikatullah, the angels will pray for him. And he's observing the greatest form of jihad, that is, Al-Ribat Al-Akbar. The Prophet ﷺ said in one hadith, after he left, he finished the prayer, then he left. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I attended, the Prophet, I attended with the Prophet ﷺ the Maghrib prayer. When he left, he returned back hurriedly. He was in a hurry. And he rushed, then he said, Abshiru, Abshiru. Abshiru from the Bishara, good news. Abshiru, rejoice. I'm going to share with you very happy news. Abshiru. هَذَا رَبُّكُمْ قَدِ فَتَحَ عَلَيْكُمْ بَابًا مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ يُبَاهِ بِكُمْ مَلَائِكَةً Before I say the meaning of this passage, that the Prophet ﷺ left for a reason or another. Then when he returned, he found some of the companions were sitting in the same place, making khitam al-salah, reciting the rakar. So he shared with them the good news. He said, your Lord has opened a door from heaven, looking at you, and he's proud of you before the angels. Yaqul, Allah the Almighty is telling his angels, why he's proud of you. Unzuru ila ibadi qad qadaw faridatan wa hum yantadiruna ukhra. Look at my servants. They just finished the prayer and waiting for the next one. So this is a very praiseworthy act. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Jumu'ah that whenever it is the Jumu'ah prayer, you should abandon all businesses, close all stores, and attend the Jumu'ah. But it doesn't mean that we have to take a day off and we have to work in or do nothing but stay in the masjid. No, look at the ayah. I'm just quoting this ayah to show you that you can be a devout worshiper and a successful businessman and a very successful doctor or a successful student. There is no conflict of interest, nor there is any contradiction. He said, فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ And once the prayer is over, فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Spread, disperse on earth. Why? وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ and seek of Allah's bounty. If you're a merchant, if you're a doctor, if you're a student, everybody go. Resume your businesses. No problem. وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Furthermore, the Prophet ﷺ said in the sound hadith, which is collected by Al-Bukhari or Muslim, إِنَّكُمْ لَمْ تَزَالُوا فِي صَلَاةٍ مَنْ تَظَرْتُمُ الصَّلَاةِ You guys are actually in prayer, as long as you're waiting for the upcoming prayer. These are very beautiful news and glad tidings. What we want to do, brothers and sisters, is I got a message from somebody yesterday. He said, for the first time, I decided to enter the masjid before the Adhan. Normally, all of us, most of us, we move to the prayer for those who attend the prayer in congregation after hearing the Adhan. And some delay until they hear the Iqama. And some delay until a couple of rakahs are missed already. He said, I decided to enter earlier once. So I entered the masjid and I prayed Tahiyatul Masjid and I sat making istighfar. Then I heard the Adhan in the masjid for the first time and I repeated after the Mu'adhan. And you guys know the virtues of repeating after the Mu'adhan and saying the dua afterward. Then I waited until the Iqama, it was 20 minutes. I was reciting Quran. I did not realize that I have finished already one para, one juz between the Adhan and the Iqama for the first time in my life. I felt like I'm sitting in heaven. So this is an experience which I encourage myself and all of you brothers and sisters to try to practice and hopefully on a regular basis.
Hopefully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will erase their of our sins and raise us into higher ranks. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم and let's take a short break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. The following hadith is the 16th hadith in the 13th chapter and it is hadith number 132 in the entire collection. Al hadith is narrated by Abu Musa al Ash'ari. May Allah be pleased with him. Abu Musa al Ash'ari, just a quick reminder, he was the companion whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, لَقَدْ أُوْتِيْتَ مِزْمَارًا مِنْ مَزَامِيرِ دَاوُودِ You've been given a very melodious voice, such as Prophet David, peace be upon him. And whenever he used to recite the Qur'an, sometimes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would sit and listen attentively to his recitation because of his very melodious recitation. رضي الله عن And he narrated plenty of a hadith from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abu Musa al-Ash'ari رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى البردين دخل الجنة متفق عليه Abu Musa al-Ash'ari may Allah be pleased with him narrated that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said he who observes the two prayers which are described as بردين referring to the two prayers of Fajr and Asr prayer, will enter paradise. The hadith is agreed upon its authenticity, meaning it has been narrated or collected by both Al-Imam Al-Bukhari wa Muslim. The two prayers, Al-Fajr wa Al-Asr, are described as Al-Bardain, and they are Al-Bardain, a dual of Bard. Al-Bard means a cool weather very nice and pleasant weather because the two prayers al-fajr wal asr occur during very comfortable hours number one and the fajr prayer or the fajr time is the coolest time of the night and the asr time is the coolest time of the day after sun moves away from its median approaching sun setting Beginning from the last time, the weather starts cooling off. And that's why even ordinary people, when you say, I'm going to visit you when? When it gets a little cooler, at Asr or before Maghrib, that is the Asr time from after the sun moves away from its median and when the shadow of an object is twice its length until sunset. So the Prophet ﷺ put a lot of emphasis on these two prayers. Some of the scholars understood that they are the best prayers of the day. But does it mean that when the Prophet ﷺ said, Man salla al-bardain al-asr wal-fajr shall enter paradise, that these two prayers will be sufficient? Two out of five, then those who would neglect the three remaining prayers. And offer these two prayers on time in congregation, in the masjid, will enter paradise? No. That's a misunderstanding. Attending all the prayers, as we mentioned in the previous hadith, as we discussed many ayat, but he put a lot of emphasis and he stressed out the attendance of these two prayers on time. Why? Because these two times are the most two comfortable times of the day. Yani, no doubt that when the person is asleep and it's still dark, and you hear the adhan, or you know that it's a fajr time, and uh, you have to get up to attend the prayer, this is a time of the possibility of laziness, the possibility of comfort, and negligence of the salah or the prayer. Because of that, the Prophet ﷺ said, the hardest two prayers for the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, al-fajr, wal uh, the munafiqeen, who showed faith and accepted Islam in the open, in public, but they uh, 
hid and concealed this belief, they had to attend the prayer along with the Prophet ﷺ. Why? In order to be seen. So they attend Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, because it's a daylight. They can see, can, they can be seen, and uh, everybody would know that they're attending. Okay, nobody would doubt that they are munafiqeen. Then, the two prayers, Al-Fajr and Isha, occur during dark times. They did not have like uh, the light at night like we have nowadays. So it would be possible and easy to slip away without being recognized, uh, without recognizing their absence. So the believers would be very keen to attend Fajr and Isha prayer. So Al-Fajr is a time where only the believers would get up to attend the prayer on time in the masjid. It doesn't mean that if you only pray Fajr, you will be saved. No. But Fajr is the hardest prayer in this regard. And Isha likewise. And Fajr and Asr, the two ends of the day, the very morning and before sunset, what happens is for Asr, it is a very busy time in winding up your daily affairs. Or for many people, it is the time when they return from work. They return from school. They get off from work and school. They take off their clothes, they take the shower, and now it's time to eat, relax, have some fun, or take a nap. Then it's the Adhan of us. Oh my God, I need to rest. So there is tendency towards resting, and laziness, and comfort. So a Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam appointed an extra reward. He did not appoint it on his own, of course. This is a revelation from Allah. Appointed by a revelation from Allah, an extra reward for these two prayers, for the person to overcome his desire of laziness and comfort during these two times, to make an effort to get up and attend the prayer in the masjid as well. And for ladies to attend the prayer at home at the earliest time of the prayer. For the Fajr prayer, its time is kind of short because it's not extended till Zuhr, as you know. Rather, it is sunrise. And for us, it is extended to Maghrib. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said when he was asked about the best deed, he said, As-salatu ala waqtiha. As-salah on its time, offering the prayer on its time, and in another narration, at earliest time. Offering the prayer at the earliest time of that prayer is the best deed, as the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in this hadith. So one who observes these two prayers at their stated time can easily secure the other three times of the three prayers without much effort. And this effort on his part will secure him a seat in heaven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, In one hadith, إِنَّكُمْ سَتَرَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ كَمَا تَرَوْنَ الْقَمَرِ Most surely the believers will get to see Allah the Almighty as you guys able, as you're able to see and visualize the moon. Of course, there is no comparison between the moon and the creator of the moon. But the similarity in the clarity. You see the moon clearly, especially on a full moon night, when the sky is clear, yes. So also, and similarly, you will get to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so clearly on the day of judgment. Who will be eligible to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Obviously the believers who used to offer the prayer on time, who used to pay the zakah, fulfill what Allah ordered, abstain from what Allah prohibited. And because of that, the Prophet sallallahu seized this opportunity and encouraged the companions to maintain the status and to look forward for it, seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in heaven by saying, فَإِنْ إِسْتَطَعْتُمْ أَلَّا تُغْلَبُوا عَلَى صَلَاةٍ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا فَافْعَلُوا He said, you people will see your Lord as you see the full moon, and you will have no trouble in seeing Him. So if you can avoid missing a prayer before sunrise, and missing a prayer before sunset, you must do so. This is another way of encouraging the believers to do or not to do. In this case, it is to do. To do what? To offer these two prayers. When the Prophet ﷺ said, Salah qabla tulu'i shams, which prayer is offered before sunrise? Fajr. 
وقبل غروبها which father prayer is offered before sunset it is asr uh, prayer Allah the Almighty said in ayah number 238 of surah al-Baqarah حافظوا على الصلوات والصلاة الوسطى وقوموا لله قانتين Guard strictly offering the prayers on time particularly الصلاة الوسطى the middle prayer what is the middle prayer? well if we consider according to the vast majority of the ulama that the first prayer of the day is Fajr then there are five prayers the middle one will be what? the Asr prayer and even without figuring this on our own there is a hadith in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said when he and his companions missed the Asr prayer uh, and offering it on its time during the battle of Al-Ahzab the confederates because they were confronting the enemies on the other side of the trench so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed against the enemies because they distracted their attention from offering the Asr on time and he named it of Salat al-Wusta he said Mala Allahu buyutahum wa quburahum naran kama shagaluna anis Salat al-Wusta because they distracted us from offering the middle prayer which is Salat al-Asr so again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah ordering the observance of the five daily prayers on a regular basis particularly the middle prayer which is Salat al-Asr when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about the Fajr and the Isha prayer they are the most burdensome prayers to the hypocrites he said furthermore in the last part of the hadith وَلَوْ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا فِيهِمَا لَأَتَوْهُمَا وَلَوْ حَبْوًا and if they knew the merits they would come to them even if they had to crawl to attend them in the masjid now this message is for us for those who show laziness or they prefer to offer the prayer at home or they may delay the prayer until they get up and they offer it after sunrise which is a major sin and even if they offer the prayer after sunrise without an excuse they could have set up their alarm they could have you know made uh, taken some measures in order to get up uh, at the Fajr time but they didn't so they are blameworthy the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said if people were to know the merits the virtues the thawab and the reward which Allah has prepared for those who would come to attend the Fajr and the Isha prayer in the Masjid no one would miss them including al munafiqeen why because of this huge thawab the merits of offering these two prayers وَلَوْ حَبْوًا they would come to them even if they're extremely sick even if they have to crawl these are all beautiful messages from the Prophet Sallallahu showing us numerous ways of doing good that the life itself is an opportunity to build up an asset of good deeds to compete with each other with regards to the balance of the hasanat so that when we meet Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, hopefully our good deeds would outweigh and overcome the bad deeds so that we'll be saved the previous hadith which we stated in in the first segment talked about remitting sins erasing them obliterating ma'asi and it's all through doing al-ibadat particularly on time and offering them properly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledge in the Quran the fact that uh, al-insan is inclined into sinning he said وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءٌ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي إِنَّ رَبِّي غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ So to counteract the much sins that human beings do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed those ibadat in order to frequently get rid of their sins Jundub ibn Abdullah رضي الله عنه narrated a hadith it's a sound hadith collected by Imam Muslim he said in this hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said من صلى صلاة الصبح فهو في ذمة الله I know a lot of people who pay a lot of money on monthly basis the payment towards insurance automobile insurance 
house insurance, life insurance, health insurance, and that will provide you with no insurance or assurance whatsoever whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for you whatever He wants to. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whoever offers the Fajr prayer, man salla subha fahuwa fi dhimmatillah. He is in the protection of Allah. He will be divinely guarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then He ordered people to respect, to honor, and to protect furthermore the person whom they know that he attended the Fajr prayer in Jama'ah. Or, lest they will come in direct confrontation with Allah who is providing this individual or those individuals with his protection. Man li waliyan faqad adhantuhu bil harb. He who annoys or shows hostility to any of my devout worshippers, I declare war against him. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. So that is the meaning of fi dhimmatillah in the promise, the covenant, and the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, another beautiful hadith with regards to the virtues of these two prayers, Al-Fajr and Al-Asr together. Previously, I mentioned some hadith concerning the virtues of Asr only, or Fajr only, or Fajr and Isha together. And now the Fajr and Asr together. And the hadith is collected by Imam Muslim, narrated by Umara ibn Ru'ayba. May Allah be pleased with him. He said, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ لَنْ يَلِجَ النَّارَ أَحَدٌ صَلَّى قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا يعني الفجر والعصر لَنْ يَلِجَ النَّارَ الولوج is at the whole entering No one shall enter hell while having prayed before sunrise and before sunset referring and the companion himself mentioned that the meaning is the fajr prayer and the asr prayer one who offers the Fajr and the Asr prayer shall never enter the fire of hell. One who offers the Fajr and Asr prayer on time shall never enter the fire of hell. As the Prophet said in this sound hadith. In another beautiful prophetic statement, the Prophet informed us that the angels who are wandering around us, each one has a task or a job to do. Some are appointed to protect the believers. Some are appointed to record their deeds and so on. They take shifts and they all meet in the following prayer. As the Prophet said, يَتَعَاقَبُونَ فِيكُمْ مَلَائِكَةٌ بِاللَّيْلِ وَمَلَائِكَةٌ بِالنَّهَارِ The angels take shifts to stay amongst you during the day and during the night. So there are shifts of the angels. وَيَجْتَمِعُونَ But the two shifts of the angels, all the angels, يَجْتَمِعُونَ They all meet, they all gather and summon فِي صَلَاةِ الْفَجْرِ they both attend, the both shifts of the angels attend with us the two prayers, Salat al-Fajr wa Salat al-Asr. ثُمَّ يَعْرُجُ الَّذِينَ بَاتُوا فِيكُمْ Those who spend the night with you would ascend to heaven. When? After the Fajr prayer. They finish the Fajr prayer now, they will ascend to heaven. فَيَسْأَلُهُمْ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِهِمْ they ascend to Allah the Almighty and Allah will ask them and He knows best about them and about us. كَيْفَ تَرَكْتُمْ عِبَادِي In which condition did you leave my servants? He knows they attended with us the Fajr prayer but He wanted them to file their report. فَيَقُولُونَ تَرَكْنَاهُمْ وَهُمْ يُصَلُّونَ وَأَتَيْنَاهُمْ وَهُمْ يُصَلُّونَ We left them while they were offering the prayer. And we have come back to them whenever they were offering the prayer. So that means from this hadith which is agreed upon its authenticity, collected by Bukhari a Muslim. The angels who attend with us the Fajr and Asr prayer, they attend the Fajr and they ascend, they take off. And they come to take the night shift at Asr prayer and they find us also in the masjid. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is proud of the believers before his angels. And he's asking those who are recording our actions. How did you leave? In which condition did you leave my servants? He said, we left them praying. And when we come to them, we also found them praying. That is the meaning of وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I've not created the jinn and the ins, the human beings, but just to worship me. May Allah the Almighty enable us to worship Him properly and make us devout worshippers. Save us and give us salvation on the Day of Judgment. Forgive us our sins and admit us to His paradise. By His mercy, أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رسول الله حبيب الله and give his best religion to them. Allah our God is the greatest, the one and only glory to him. He born in humans to be the best, and give his best religion to them. So why did they ignore that, forgetting all about him in paradise, worshipping cows, fire and stones, selling the best with the cheapest price? So why did they Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price